as always, if you haven't had a chance to try the question on your own first, pause the video and do so. Now, because this question instructs us to use work and energy considerations to find the frictional force that stops the bullet, we might want to write down a couple of relationships that involve work. The first equation shows us that work is equal to the product of the force acting on the bullet, the cosine of an angle, which we'll talk about momentarily, and the displacement that the bullet undergoes while it is stopping. The work done on the bullet can also simply equal the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And since the equations are both equations for work, what that means is that we can set the two expressions for work equal to one another. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it turns out to be helpful to change the kinetic energy terms into one half mv squareds. Notice that the final kinetic energy contains the vf term to represent the final velocity and then the initial kinetic energy contains vi to represent the initial velocity. Now it turns out that most of this information is given except of course for the frictional force, the force that we're actually trying to calculate. But before we start plugging in known values it's useful to take a look at the angle. It turns out that theta is the angle between the force and the displacement of the bullet. So why don't we draw a picture of the bullet and we can assume that it's traveling to the right. Now because it's traveling to the right the displacement would be pointing to the right in that direction. However the force is actually pushing against the bullet. And we know that because it's acting to slow the bullet down and bring it to rest. So the displacement points to the right, the force points to the left. Think about what the angle between the force and the displacement would be. And hopefully you can see that it would be 180 degrees. So when we plug in for theta, we must make sure that we use 180 degrees. So why don't we go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by cosine theta times displacement. And of course, those will cancel on the left side of the equation. And so now we have the equation solved for the frictional force. The final velocity will be zero since the bullet is coming to rest. The mass of the bullet was given. We just have to make sure that we use kilograms, not grams. So of course, to convert the 7.8 grams into kilograms, we just multiply by 10 to the minus three. That'll put it into kilograms. As mentioned, the angle will be 180 degrees. And then the displacement was given to us as 5.5 centimeters. That needs to be converted into meters. And we just have to remember that to do that, we multiply the 5.5 centimeters by 10 to the minus two. So with all those ideas in mind, let's plug in all the known values. And when you use your calculator to simplify that, you should get approximately 23,444 newtons as the answer. So that will be the average force of friction that is exerted on the bullet as the bullet is brought to rest. Now for part B, to determine how much time elapses between the moment the bullet enters the tree and the moment it stops moving, we're going to have to look at some equations from kinematics. One equation that might be helpful is the following. We know the final velocity is zero, the initial velocity was given, and we can find the acceleration. Now, we weren't told that directly, but we recall that acceleration is equal to the net force acting on the bullet divided by its mass. Now, we just determined the net force, and we were given the mass, so we can plug those in. Notice again that when we plugged in the mass, we converted it into kilograms by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. Now this acceleration is enormous, but it actually makes sense because the tree is stopping a bullet in only five and a half centimeters, so it's going to have to exert a tremendous acceleration in order to accomplish that. So with that value for acceleration in mind, we can plug in the final of velocity, the initial velocity, and that acceleration, and that'll give us the time. What we'll notice is that we've inserted a minus sign in front of the acceleration. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember, the bullet is traveling to the right, the net force is pushing this way. That's the force of friction that the tree is exerting on the bullet. And since the force points to the left, the acceleration also points to the left. The net force and acceleration always point together. And a leftward pointing acceleration is indeed a negative acceleration. So just make sure you include a negative sign there. And when you solve that equation, you should get a very small increment of time, 1.91 times 10 to the minus four seconds. So as always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more videos that show solutions to commonly assigned homework questions.